Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, I thought it would be the perfect time to give some of my dating tips. On my blog, I never talked about dating and I tried to keep a lot of my dating life off of my blog. And part of that was a conscious decision because I make a lot of mistakes and it can be kind of hard to share those experiences online as you're living them. But now that I am a few years older, I feel more comfortable sharing some of the things that I've learned over the years. Most of these are from mistakes that I've made. They're valuable and I kind of wish someone had told me about them sooner so that maybe I wouldn't have made the mistake myself. So today I have five tips that I wanted to share. This is not an exhaustive list, so I wouldn't take everything that I say and think that you are totally 100% never going to make a dating mistake. That is not what this video is all about, but I did want to just talk about some things that I think are important as you start to date. So throughout this video, I'm going to refer to boyfriends and husbands and boys, and that's just because I am interested in guys and I don't want you to think that I am just being exclusive to men. This is just coming from my personal experience. Obviously, you can interchange girlfriend, you can interchange girl, woman, wife, whomever you're interested in. I just want to be really clear that love is love and do what you gotta do. So here are some of the top lessons I learned and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I did. The first tip that I have is actually not really about dating, but it will help your dating life. And that is to remember that relationships are two-way streets. And part of that means that you have to be bringing the absolute best version of yourself to the table. And sometimes that means maybe this isn't a great time for you to start dating if you need to make sure your priorities are straight and you have the time to dedicate towards dating and to be in a relationship. It takes a lot of work. So if you're not 100% comfortable and confident with who you are, don't be afraid to take a few steps back so you can really try to work on yourself. And that way, when you feel ready, you're actually bringing the best version of yourself to the table. I know I talk about this a lot and I'm probably starting to sound like a broken record, but the better you are, the better all of your relationships are gonna be, especially when it comes to dating. And I know that there were times when I was living in New York City and I was trying to date and things were not working out. And a big part of that was that I wasn't super happy with who I was. I wasn't being healthy. I wasn't getting enough sleep. I was feeling really overworked and drained with my work life. I felt really constricted and I just wasn't able to put myself out there in a way that was going to attract something in a relationship that I wanted to be in. So instead of attracting those great relationships, I just kept attracting bad relationships that were kind of like little bits of candy or you know putting a band-aid over a wound and you think that being in relationships is gonna solve all your problems but they were actually hindering me in other ways because I had all these other issues going on in my life and I can definitely speak with experience that the better relationships I've been in are the ones where I feel totally confident in who I am and that being in a relationship is just like a cherry on the cake and that it's not what my whole universe is centered around don't feel bad if you need to take a step out of the dating scene and to focus on yourself. Dating isn't the end of the world. Not being in a relationship isn't the end of the world. Being in a relationship is amazing and it can be this incredible experience, but also being happy with who you are and feeling comfortable, you know, just being yourself and being alone and enjoying that time and taking that time to really do the things you wanna do is just as important. Okay, along the lines of that, it is a two-way street to be in a relationship and just how you wouldn't want to be judged for some of your imperfections, it's important to remember that the person that you're dating is also an imperfect human being. I think a lot of television shows and movies and books put this huge emphasis on kind of finding this Prince Charming or you know this picture perfect person that you're going to be with and they're the one with a capital T and a capital O. That can be the case, I guess, but it's also important to remember that that person is still a human being. Whenever I'm in a relationship and someone starts driving me crazy or there's something that's bothering me about that person or there's like a weird habit that they do. I always try to turn the mirror back on myself and do some self-reflecting and say, you know what, it might bother them that I'm super type A and that I want to be going to the restaurant and knowing you know, every single thing about the details about the date. It might bother them that I have you know, 
some quirks when I watch TV that I like to watch with subtitles. It's okay that the person isn't perfect. And that's actually what makes people and relationships so amazing is that you aren't perfect, neither one of you are, and that you find a way to make it work together. Continuing off of the no one is perfect, this is something I think is going to plague our generation and that is the prevalence of dating apps. On so many levels, dating apps can be amazing because you're able to meet a bunch of people that you wouldn't have been able to meet, you know, just by walking into a bar. The doors are really open in terms of finding people that you might not have otherwise met. Met. The problem with dating apps though is that it's very surface level as you're swiping through really quickly and you're kind of just looking at pictures and like is the person funny in their quotes and you're not actually getting to know that person on a real level. Yes, it's amazing that you can meet all these people in an app, but just be careful that you're not being too stringent on who you're looking at and that you're not just writing someone off because they're not six foot tall or that they didn't go to some college that you think is good enough just based on these surface level things. It's so, so, so easy to do on a dating app and I think you're missing a lot of opportunities to meet incredible people. Yes, you might have a certain type. I know from my experience, my first celebrity crush was Heath Ledger and that is definitely what I would say is my type in terms of on paper. But in actuality, I've never actually met someone who has like a man bun that I want to date. So if I was looking on a dating app, I might say yes to all the man buns, but that would mean that I was missing all the people that I actually would connect with on a personal level. So this tip is definitely a mistake that I have made over and over and over again. So I'm saying this as a warning, but also like don't beat yourself up if this isn't something that you have mastered because I certainly haven't. And that is to look for red flags and there's kind of like a caveat to this like there are some things that someone might do that might seem like a big deal in the moment but you kind of have to pick your battles and again no one is perfect so you shouldn't break up over little things however there are some things that should come across as a red flag don't just sweep it under the rug and assume that it's gonna get better over time if there is an issue with someone and these are like deal breaker issues not like oh this person doesn't have a good sm like straight teeth or this person doesn't have the right clothing cell I'm talking real deal breakers if a red flag comes up, don't ignore it and address it right away. And that might not mean that you have to break up, but definitely bring it up then in the moment and figure out whether or not this is going to continue to be an issue. I know for me, I would kind of talk myself out of things as being a big deal when in reality they were a much bigger deal than on surface level. And then six months down the road or a year later, the problem is still a problem. And in fact, it might've grown even bigger. And I wish I had addressed and dealt with it six months or a year before when it first popped up. And a way that you can kind of help yourself with this is be really open with some of your close girlfriends and girlfriends that you know aren't gonna like go and gossip with all your other friends, people that you can really trust, your mom, your cousin, your best friend from growing up, you know, who can you talk to and get some unbiased opinion? Sometimes when you're in the relationship, it can be hard to get an outside perspective personally without having someone coming in and kind of helping you see the light. And I try to look at it sometimes, it can be really challenging and saying, if I were my best friend and I heard that this boyfriend treated me in this certain way, like what would my reaction be? Or if I knew my girlfriend was being treated like this by a guy or had this issue pop up in their relationship, what would I say to her? And that's actually kind of helped me realize some of the issues that have come up. And sometimes I say, this is actually something that we can work on and that it isn't a deal breaker in the long run, or this is something that's super important to me and this isn't the type of relationship I wanna be in. So keep that in mind too. But put yourself in your girlfriend's shoes and think, what would she say to me if she heard this was happening and would she want me to be in this situation or not? That always helps me. And like, look, red flags are never fun when you're in a relationship, you want things to work out. You know, that's everyone's hope, of course. You're putting in this work, you're putting this effort and 80% of that person in that relationship might be amazing. But if that 20% is really starting to get to you and it's not the type of relationship that you know in your heart that you really want at the end of the day, don't be afraid to pull 
pull the plug. I was actually reading this book called The Art of Thinking Clearly and it's an amazing book if you haven't read it. It talks a lot about life stuff and life hacks, how to make better decisions and taking the human element out of it. But one of the things that they talk about is the sunk cost fallacy and you just don't wanna get stuck in the situation where you feel like you need to keep going in a relationship because you've been in it for two years. If it's not working out, it's not working out and don't be afraid to start fresh. It can be scary to break up and to feel like you have to start dating again, but it's not the end of the world. In fact, it could be the beginning of an amazing chapter of your life. So my last piece of dating advice is going to be for someone who might be afraid to start dating again because they just got out of a relationship or your first year into like the real world and you're not even sure where to start. After I went through my last breakup, I remember my biggest fear during the breakup was actually not around the breakup up it was okay well how am I going to start dating again and I was so afraid to start dating because it had been years since I had been in the dating game and I felt like everything had changed and I was a different person I was older and you hear all these horror stories about dating so I just had a lot of anxiety around dating in general and what I did is something I would recommend to anyone whether you are you know going out on your first dates in life or you're just breaking up with someone or you're not happy with your dating life in general and that is to just start with the clean slate and just put yourself out there and I know that is such a cliche thing to say but I decided after the breakup that I was just going to start dating and that I was going to say yes to any and all experiences without any expectation I just wanted to start dating and it wasn't like I was trying to find a husband or trying to find my soulmate just wanted to get in the practice of going on dates so I would feel comfortable and know in the back of my mind that I was capable of doing this so I signed up for multiple apps I had girlfriends helping me like you know write my profile with me and I had blind dates set up I reached out to some of my old friends that I had kind of dated or had feelings for or had crushes on in the past and just threw myself into the game and what was amazing was that it was such a fun experience and I hadn't put all this pressure on myself to feel like I was out there to find the one. I just wanted to date and I wanted to have fun and meet people and have these amazing experiences and pretty much immediately a lot of that anxiety started to fade away because I didn't have that pressure on myself and I actually found that when I didn't have that pressure on myself I was so much better on the dates and I was more comfortable and more relaxed and able to talk about myself and have fun conversations with people even if they didn't end up being someone that I wanted to date long term they were all such valuable experiences and it was fun and I think when you keep dating fun and you put yourself out there it can be a scary and intimidating thing but it doesn't have to be and if you meet people along the way that you know even just turn into friends or you find someone that you might want to set one of your friends up with you know it's just a fun experience take the pressure off don't feel like you need to go on a date and meet your husband or girlfriend or wife or whomever you know it should be a fun experience and so if you're nervous about it just go for it try to set up double dates. reach out to your friends and tell them that you're interested in being set up with some of their friends and if they know anyone you know tell everyone that you're open to meeting new people and see what comes your way okay so if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and maybe leave one of your favorite dating tips in a comment below and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already